All right, how you doing today, guys? I appreciate you taking the time to tune in. We're going to talk some offensive line play uh, this morning and uh, kind of go through drill tape. This is an interesting um, uh, tape because it kind of takes you through some of the things that I think uh, have worked well consistently for us and some things that have kind of adapted and changed over time. Uh, I think we all need to understand that. But uh, first and foremost, I will uh, introduce myself. My name is Corey Allen. I'm the offensive coordinator, offensive line coach. Uh, at the University of Finley, Division II school here in Ohio. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be on. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump into this. And, you know, you see the title of this, taking it from the practice field to the game field. And I think that that's something that's very important for us is, is what we are doing uh, on the practice field applicable and showing up uh, on game day? Because if it's not, then we, we have an issue. Uh, then we're just wasting time. And we do not want to drill just to drill, okay? From an offensive line perspective, uh, everything starts with the teaching progression, all right? Um, and that fits into everything we do. And for us, it's, it's pretty simple. It's stance, departure, contact, movement, finish, okay? Stance, departure, contact, movement, finish. And that is an applicable teaching progression to uh, anything that we're doing offensively. It all starts with our stance. And then we're going to depart. I think that's natural. Is it a three-step, a five-step? Is it sprint out? Is it power counter, outside zone? Whatever it is that we're asking our offensive line to do, there is a departure. There's a how and a why. And then there's a contact of a defensive player and how we're going to contact them, why we're contacting them that way, and what we want to do once we start making movement. And then at the end there, kind of that, that last piece, that sixth piece, is the win from a defeated position because – we still need to move the ball. We still need to create first downs and explosive plays, even when everything doesn't go perfect. And of course, in a drill situation, um, things always go perfect, right? That, that's just kind of the O-line nature. You get your drills the way that you want them. So um, this is going to take you through kind of the gamut of run and pass drills that we do and, and kind of why we do them. And one thing you're going to see is in each drill, and this is what you have to ask yourself is what in that drill is, is, pulling out of your teaching progression. For example, here, what does this utilize? The square drill, the first thing, this is we start pre-practice with this, okay? Um, well, this utilizes movement for us. We're just gonna get warmed up and it works the basic fundamentals of knee bend, uh, good base, and then, and then what we call step or place, and we'll get into that. But you ask yourself those questions when you're doing the drill. Does it fit into my teaching progression? Is it part of a nice buttoned up package of this is the way that we're doing things? So when you look at the square drill, and again, this is pre-practice for us, okay? We're not in a stance. We're just down with a good bend, good solid base, okay? Uh, playing on the balls of our feet. And that's one of the things I think that I want to point out before we get going with this drill is, you know, a lot of people talk about, and everybody's got different ways to do it, and doing it in all different fashions is, is quite okay. Um, there's a lot of talk today about, well, you can only do it this way, and, and there, there's certain camps, uh, I don't believe that's true because I believe that you have a number of different players as well. You know, we have six foot five, uh, you know, 225 pound kids that we sign that become 300 pound tackles. And we have kids that are six foot 290 right out of high school and, and, and in all different ways, shapes and forms, you need to get them to produce. Um, so for us being able to take what's best out of a lot of different camps is important for us, but when people talk about playing on the instep, a lot of times that instep goes from all the way up the front of the ball, the foot, back to the heel. And we want to be a little more aggressive than that. We want to talk and emphasize the ball of the foot, okay, which is, is going to be right in here, all right, right in there, um, in that inside, right, right shy of the, the big toe, okay? And so right now we're just following directions and attacking forward, lateral, Okay, and then we're even going to pull back and we're just trying to get loose. This is a pre practice drill every day for us. Okay, but we do want to be in an attacking mode. And I point out number 74 here, the one just to the right of the coach that's running the drill. When he comes forward, you can see there's there's somewhat of an attack out of him there. 54, the kid to his right, is attacking forward, whereas 68, all the way to the left here, right near where I'm standing. He's pounding his feet straight up and down, okay? That's not what we want out of the drill, okay? We want an attack, all right? We want to be aggressive and physical with this thing. So anyways, this drill is going to go five to 10 seconds, no longer, pre-practice. 
just get things rolling, get things loose, and make sure that we're playing with a great base uh, as we start practice. And I think especially for our young guys, that's something that uh, is important for us. When we talk about step or place, especially going laterally, if I step four inches, I'm going to replace four. If I step seven, I'm going to replace seven to keep that base. Um, the next thing we'll work on is just our generic steps on air, okay? And then it goes back to that question, what do we utilize out of the progression? All right? And we, we utilize our stance, our departure, our movement, and our finish. What's not in there? Well, contact. It, it's built in. There's steps on air. All right? And we're just working our base zone steps here. And this is something that you can do uh, in the off season. This is something you can do early on in camp, uh, uh, spring ball, different things of that nature. You see here, this is just us in AM workouts. And we're using a line, all right, and just taking our zone step. And what's really important for us, uh, again, center should always be snapping. There should always be a ball in their hand. Do not let a center go through a drill uh, without having a football in his hand. It's a wasted rep. Anytime he can snap a ball, I think it's imperative. Um, but as you can see here, all right, we're just working those generic steps, the one-two, all right, stance, departure, okay, and then working movement. Big point of emphasis for us here on our zone steps is that our backside leg needs to work what we call a J step. You know, you take your departure step, all right, and then as you work your J step, that that needs to come up and in vertical, and we need to apply pressure. Yes, we run and play some zone football, all right, but zone football to us is not a lateral shovel. It's a shuffle. It's not a shield guys and get in their way. We want to take a departure step which will be lateral or grab some depth, depending on alignment. But then that second step, we want to violently throw our hips up into the block with our hips and hands right there. And you see the kids doing a good job of that, a better job done with this kid right here all right, than what you're looking at over here. And just throwing those up, uh, up and in, okay? And then we're going to work various. We'll work our tight zone, our mid zone, and then our outside zone. And when we work outside zone, if, if you guys are out there and you're a true zone team not a pin and pull okay we take what we call a depth open step and i think both guys are doing a good job of not violently dropping underneath themselves okay they're taking a depth open all right and then we want to emphasize what we call low shoulder high shoulder here and i think you start that on air and then it translates over to the field and if you look at this kid um right here who, you know, just a week and a half ago signed with the, the Arizona Cardinals. And this is him way back when he was a sophomore. Um, but you can see the low shoulder there and the high shoulder up there, because that's going to allow you to knife that hand into the mid, uh, the middle of the numbers on the chest, um, on the, on the defender. Okay. And so we're just getting out and running right there on our OZ tracks. You can see the same thing going the other way here. You see those guys, and when we talk about knifing that backside hand, one of the buzz terms, and I think, you know, O-line guys love buzz terms, it's keep the elbow sewn tight to the rib cage. okay? You see them trying to keep that thing tight because the minute that backside hand flares, the minute that backside arm flares out, you're going to end up catching the backside of the man, and we're not going to get play side. So when we talk to them about keeping that elbow sewn tight to the rib cage, it's just a mental reminder of how tight I need to have that, uh, that hand. Okay. So as you're looking here, we talked about our departure tracks and this is some game film. Our departure tracks are dependent on alignment of down defenders. Okay. This may just be a mid zone call, all right, which it is here. This is just mid zone for us. Okay. But how we're going to play that, and what departure steps we're going to take it are dependent upon the alignment of our defender. For example, if we just taught everybody, the minute you hear mid zone, take your mid zone step like you're a robot. If we did that, there's no way that this right tackle is going to get to that linebacker. It's not. He's going to end up on the backside of the kid way too far on the backside of him and not be able to engage him. So he understands that based on the alignment of the linebacker, he is actually, even though we have a mid zone call here to the left, he's going to take an outside zone track to the left. And now I'm able to engage that man all right, and get, and get him washed past. So that's an important aspect for us uh, is, is the ability to take your tight zone steps, your mid zone steps and your outside zone steps and apply them based on alignment. 
Okay. For example, here, this is just a simple naked concept. All right. And we know that we're running naked to the left here. So the left tackle is, is not going to just take a mid zone step. He's going to execute what we call a high wall and turn it out because it's an inconsequential block. All right. Whereas the right guard is going to take a mid zone step here and does a nice job of chipping through the three to allow the seal. All right. And then we're out with a nice clean release. So again, it just gives you an idea of, of what it is that we are looking for. Now, Here's an interesting piece um, because we were talking about zone steps on air. It's also applicable to talk about those zone steps in gap schemes as well. You know, here we are running a gap scheme into the boundary. Okay. And when you're talking about the right tackle, as opposed to getting 25, 30 different steps and trying to put too much in their brain, uh, from a fundamental standpoint, you just tell them, hey, take a tight zone left step. That's what that's what your tempo step is there. So if you look at the right tackle here, you see him, he's just taking a nice zone left step here, which puts him on track to clear through the B gap and pick up his assignment. And I think that's something that you want to focus on a little bit is how can you refine all your terminology? How can you cut down on some of the verbiage that you're using with your offensive linemen? And we found that talking about those and, and we we use a numbering system when it comes to our run game but we talk about a lot of our steps as zone steps left and zone steps right hey that step right there would be a, a tight zone left step all right even though we're running power to the right there so hopefully that makes sense a little bit um the next drill that we're going to talk about is uh, uh leverage and a hand replace and and from the progression this is talking about movement and contact because they're already engaged okay and this is a great drill you can see it says there to work on resetting your hands, uh, teaching your hips to drop and run vertical and climb up on a defender. And one of the things that's interesting about a drill like this is when you start with a base and you engage, as you start to put a defender on skates, you cannot keep the same width and expect to get what, you know, everybody wants to see is that pancake block. So as I begin to drive, my feet should start to narrow as I climb up and in all right, on the defender. And you can see it happening here. And you see all we're working on right now, the defender has his hands on the shoulder pads and we're just working that good drive, that good leg drive there. And then on the whistle, all right, on the whistle or the call, the command, we're gonna reset our hips, drop underneath and run up underneath this guy. All right, and we'll go back and forth and back and forth on this. And I apologize, you know, if, if this is a little bit choppy, um, but hopefully you can get the idea of that good fit, right? That good knee bend right there. You see the elbows are tucked in nice and tight. All right, eyes are up right in the chest of the defender. You like that arch in the small of the back uh, of the, of the uh, offensive lineman there. And then you see the ability for us to just change and work on just resetting and finding your hands. And that's something we work on a lot in individual because a lot of times, you know, it gets, it gets crazy down there in the trenches and we need to find our hands. You know, we, we don't block uh, hand shields all right, on, on Saturday afternoons or Friday nights. And so finding the body of the man is important. You know, a long time ago, I had the opportunity to sit down with Jim McNally when he was up with the bills. And he said, the less field equipment you can use, the better you need to block people. And that's something that's really always stuck with me because bodies move. You know, three techniques turn, you know, two eyes drop an anchor on doubles and different things like that. So we need to be able to make sure that we're fitting men as much as possible when we're in full pads. So lead foot to linebackers is an interesting drill. It's a small point that I think uh, is missed at times uh, when it comes to how we block linebackers. I think a lot of you guys out there as, as O-line coaches, you, you, you'll see – Times where when you're your center, your guards, guys that are open gapped, climb up to a linebacker, the first thing that happens is they end up coming in with square feet. Okay. And and they get stopped. And now the 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 offensive coordinator, the head coach, everybody's going, Well, that kid's 295 pounds. How in the heck is he getting stonewalled by a 210-pound linebacker? Well, every bit of inertia and momentum that an offensive lineman has gained while climbing through an open gap to a linebacker is completely nullified the minute he comes to square feet, all right, and stops and drops his hips. Now you have a guy coming downhill with force, 
all right, looking to near shoulder you and, and, and explode through that gap at linebacker. And, and that's where we end up losing some of those battles. So we're looking for a slight stagger in our feet and we need to drill that to get it. So in lead foot to linebackers, we're working on, again, goes back to the teaching progression, stance, departure, contact, movement, finish. What are we getting here? Well, we're getting departure, contact, movement, finish. Okay. Um, and you see, we're talking about not getting stagnant feet here. So if you watch this drill, okay, you see, we just have three pods set up right here. All right. Now, um, I love the, the, the med balls. I love the use of the balls. We don't have, them, okay. They're, they're, they're a little bit, uh, at times. And, and this was shot a couple of years ago. They're a little bit, maybe outside our, our price range, what have you. But the point being that I, I want a narrower strike zone for the hands. So I just take the hand shield and turn it sideways so that we're keeping our hands in tight and, and elbows in tight as we explode upon that. Now we're climbing. All right. And we're simulating open gap here. And all we're looking for as we drop our hips, as we come to the linebacker level and we drop our hips, we're looking for a slight lead. And in this case, you look at the kid here on the far right, all right, we are working a left foot lead right here. Okay, so we're talking inside zone left. If you watch his feet there, see how there's a slight left foot lead right there out of that foot. It's a slight stagger. Now, the stagger can't be too big. If the stagger's too big, you're going to get turned. But a slight stagger will allow you to explode into the man, all right, and create vertical movement. All right, we'll watch it right from the beginning. Keep an eye on his left foot as he comes to contact. Boom, right there. There it is, slight stagger. And now that allows me to continue in motion because once I engage with that slight stagger of that left foot, the right foot's going to be able to continue up and in, and we're going to be able to be violent with that. All right, so you get an idea right there of what we're trying to get done with that slight lead foot. Now, here's a right foot lead by the kid on the far right. All right, slight stagger, and it allows him to throw that backside leg in uh, very well and, again, create movement. All right, now, an everyday drill for us, an everyday drill uh, is our two-step fit, okay, um, to the two most important steps for us getting off the ball getting your departure step in getting your j step in which is your contact step all right what does it utilize from our progression stance departure contact and movement all right we want to make sure when you're doing these things that you allow for gather steps to occur okay so when we're talking about a two-step fit we're saying hey these first two steps are live but you don't have to stop on two because if you do that you're going to get them heel driving and you're going to get them uh, not being as aggressive as you want them. So uh, we have the defender, as we mentioned before, holding the bag sideways. All right. Uh, to create a good strike zone. Um, and um, then we switch that to hold it long ways to tighten down the strike zone for the O-line. So this is us doing it a few years ago. This is this is a while back, some old film here. But again, we're just looking at getting a great departure step and then getting that J step, that second step thrown violently up and in, into the block. And if you watch this leg and you watch this leg uh, by our two offensive linemen here, you're going to see that step coming up and in with the hips and hands. I love the tight hands out of both these guys. And you see one, two, get them in the ground. One, two, all right. Violently getting those hands in the ground or those feet in the ground. Okay. There it is again. Again, again. Now, these kids, you know, for what it's worth, this kid was a first-team all-conference kid. This kid was a first-team all-American kid. And they they got off the ball fast. Now, you look here, and here's a kid who's a true freshman uh, in his first full day of pads. And you can see it's not – it's a little bit more robotic. When you're talking two-step fit, I'm going to take you back to that last one. Step one should roll into step two. Okay? We don't want to go step – step it wants to be step 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 all right we want to get these things rolling all as as if you're caroming off of one to bring the other that's so important for us um and you can see these guys are doing a very good job of that especially the kid right here on the left all right you can see it step in the ground boom j steps already coming up and in vertical i'm not stopping my movement right it goes right back into the same point that i made about that lead with the linebackers don't stop your movement now young man here 
you see him pound that foot into the ground right here, okay? And then he brings the J-step, okay? And you're going to see the same thing over here out of this young man, one, two. That's not, that's not as rhythmic as we want. That's robotic. We need to get these guys out of that thing, exploding through that. Now, true freshman, all right, now you go to a little bit better film, and a couple days later, or a couple years later, excuse me, you see him over here on the far right, and he's doing a much better job of getting that first step in the ground while starting to simultaneously bring that J step up and in, okay? And then we're going to explode and lift eyes to the sky uh, and, and get this two-step fit in the ground. Really like the work here uh, done by the center on this rep. You see we're, again, always taking a snap. Now, with the center, all right, you're going to see a difference in footwork here. So when we work with our centers on these type of drills, we don't line our center up the same way as we line our guards and tackles up, right? Guards and tackles are off the ball a little bit more. The center's right up there on the point. So what we do, if you guys use boards, and I would encourage you, if you use the long boards, cut them in half, as you see that I've done, because uh, nobody fits and drives as long as, as those old boards are, okay? That contact and that decision's made in that first couple steps. But and anyways, back to my point here, we're going to move the center up because he grabs a little bit of depth on his first step to give him room to get two in the ground. So if you watch him, see him stepping back. That's what we call a depth open step there. Bang, bang. And that allows him to get up and in all right, and be violent with his finish. Again, the guy on the right is probably your best look at this in regards to what we're trying to get out of it. Uh, right there. Now, at times, all right, you're going to need to make sure that you're not getting a bunch of wasted movement. Like what I don't like here on the far right, you see the hands flail out. Okay. You see the elbows flail out there of that, of that tackle. When we talk about our hands and we're a two point stance team, we talk about short loading our hands, just top of the thighs. Okay. You know, I was taught way back when, put your hands in the holsters. Boy, could you expose your chest any more than that? Um, when we short load, we think about our thumbs. You take a look at my hands right here. We think about our thumbs pulling up the, the zipper all right, of our pants. We're just going to short load our hands right inside so they're nice and tight. And we want no wasted movement. We don't want the arms flailing out. Now, the J step is an important thing. And here's an interesting piece. Um, this is a tight end for us. And for the life of him, he couldn't bring the J step. He was not bringing that second step. And so, uh, what I did with the defender is I, I said, Brandon, I said, take the bag, put it on your shin, protect yourself. I said, uh, JT, here's what I want you to do. Take your first step, and then with your left leg, I want you to kick Brandon in the shin as hard as possible. Said, Coach, what are you talking about? I said, take your first step, and then kick him in the shin as hard as possible. He could not get that transition down, okay? And this is kind of a point of we got to think outside the box a little bit to help our guys. Everybody learns differently. Everybody's taught differently. To sit there and say um, – you keep having him do the same drill and don't give him any other teaching points is going to be problematic. Now I get there's a million things wrong with that backside leg. He's driving his heel in right there because he probably doesn't want to kick him in the shin. But again, he takes a step and then he brings his second one. Is it over exaggerated? Sure it is. But that's the point because right now all we were getting out of him for days was this, this when we wanted that, <clears throat> excuse me. So, you see him bring it, okay? So everybody's excited about that. And now, as we go to teach and we get to the next rep, there it is. There's the J step coming up and in. Shoot, guys are excited. We got guys clapping because he finally gets it done. We need to temper that down. It's way too big of a step. But the point is, think outside the box to get done what it is that you need to get done, okay? And now you're going to look at a, at a step J step scenario right here on the right side. We have an unwrapped linebacker. And so we're going to make a push call here and we're just going to go three for three. And you see everyone take those zone steps and you see a good J step right here by the center. All right. Getting violent up through the seam. And that's, and that's exactly what you want out of that scenario. Now fit drive and move is the next piece off of the two step fit. Okay, guys are going to start to move and we need to talk about being able to control the man right now. All right, what we have are those yellow crayon type things that the receivers use and we're in a nice fit right there and we're driving that guy out 
We're driving that guy out. And when I blow the whistle, the defender is supposed to let go and open up, and we're supposed to finish eyes to the sky, narrowing our feet. Okay, this shouldn't take that long. This should be a fast rep drill. And we want to get vertical, get vertical, get vertical, keep our elbows tucked in. All right, drive, 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 drive. They open up, and we accelerate up and out, finish the rep. Okay, so this is just a simple fit and drive. All right, better rep right here out of these two as far as the idea of what we're trying to get done. All right, but you can see we're in a good fit position, driving, 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 let it go. All right, and finish the rep with an accelerant there. Okay, now, as we start to look at this, all right, once we get done with these reps of fit and drive, we're going to now start to move. All right, now, you're going to see two things here. Number one, you're going to see this all right, defender become extremely what I would call A-framed right there. All right? His hips have fallen off of the block. He then no longer is in control, all right? whereas the guy on our right okay, is in complete control because you want to steer this with your hands. All right? As you start to feel a defender moving off your body, you want to use your hands to balance it and bring it back all right, to the base. All right, but we don't want to slide off of the man. We're talking vertical drive right here. We don't want to slide and fall off of the man. So as I press all right, with that left hand, I need to make sure that my right foot is balancing it back out. If I'm pressing him back in, if I'm losing him that way, then I'm balancing with that right foot. If I go right hand, I'm balancing my left foot and trying to bring him back to base. That's important for us because if you get too thin on a guy, He's gonna, he's going to push, pull you. He's gonna shrug you off. He's gonna rip. He's gonna make the tackle. So again, you see just the idea of the balancing act here on the fit and drive. Okay, good look at a fit and drive right here out of our right guard. Ball snapped. See his hands come inside. Bang! There it is. Accelerate, accelerate, accelerate. Good. Good look at a fit and drive. Now, power pulls debatable on 9 million levels. Okay. Um, you know, people use skip pulls, um, square pull, all these different things. Um, we are a, a depth width open pull team. Okay. Uh, we do not skip pull. And th there's a lot of reasons for that. But one of them is, you know, you see, we see so much wrong arm out of defensive ends that power is hitting out in the C gap more often than not. And, and with that being the case, Square pull, I don't get, think, uh, we don't feel like gets us the momentum that we need, nor do I feel like it um, gets us out to where we need to be to make a decision. So when we're working power pulls, all right, stance, departure, and movements there, the hoop that we put down, we steal the D-line's hoop, and they get upset, but it, it demands the depth, simulates the width of the pull, okay? And then we have boards right there uh, to simulate kick out or, or log, and then uh, we'll move a target at times as well, and, and I'll give you an idea here. But Decision needs to be made, <clears throat> excuse me, on the third step. So when you look at this, this is the right guard here. He's going to go depth open, crossover, and on the third step, and you look at how far he can get on three steps. One, two, three. There. On your third step, it's going to land on a 45-degree angle. If it does that, you're going to be able to tell at that point, kick out or log. And you'll either plan off of that and come vertical up and in the seam because it's a kick out, right? or you'll be able to go around the fullback and get yourself to the linebacker after you get that wrong arm. But you can look and see one, two, three, see the plant on the third step, fighting to keep our shoulders square, fighting to keep our shoulders square, and then accelerating in vertical all right, to that second level. This one's getting dropped in the bucket just a touch too much for me here. Not terrible, but just a touch too much. One, two, three. All right, we want to lean on that thing. Now, here you see a kid in his first day with us going skip hole. Let's look by his third step as to how far he gets. One, two, three. He's behind the center, okay? If we're playing a ton of wrong arm teams, you got three steps in the ground and you've only made it to the center, that's not far enough for me. All right, in the power game. So that's that's one, one of the reasons why we don't teach that, okay? Now, here you see that same kid four years later, and he's now working, all right, a, a depth open pull here. One, two, three. You see him get out and around, okay, and he's in good shape. 
<coughs> excuse me, take the bag and we're good to go. I think our shoulders are turned just a little too much here, okay, uh, out of this kid. But you see the eyes doing a good job with his eyes tracking, uh, tracking the bag and being where it needs to be, okay? This is just us wanting to focus on the eyes. Really nice job here by this guard of keeping his shoulders and his head square as he tracks this thing all the way across. I think this is just a good thing to do to really keep focus for your guys on the front of that helmet, the front of the face mask, and make sure you're demanding that they're staying square. Okay. Again, you see really good eyes here by this kid. You can see him focus the entire time as he works his way through. So I think that's a benefit for us. And here you see some of these depth open poles, all right, showing up into different schemes. Okay, you see a three down front here with a with a with a cross dog in the middle. And again, one, two, three, bang, there it is. And uh and, and we do a good job there. Now, you're gonna see it again here out of the right guard. All right. And uh we're we're working a pull to the left. Again, depth open, not a square pull, not a skip pull. All right, there it is. You see the wrong arm, right, out of the defensive end. And we're inside out on the kick out of the Mike linebacker. One, two, three, decisions made. There we go. Okay, you're going to see the same thing here out of the out of the right guard. Boom. All right, there he is. Keep our eyes on him. Love the violent finish there. Chase him down. Two, three, good. Good to go. Okay. Now, right guard pull again, and we get kicked out for the first time. We've been seeing a little bit of wrong arm, right? So now we get kick out, and we are nice and square through there, and we're in good shape. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you get wrong arm, whether you get kick out. You can see that this is an applicable pull all right, for both here. All right, now, something that we spend a lot of time in in the run game uh, would be our pods and our combo drills. It's going to utilize stance, departure, contact, and movement. We set our players up in two-man and three-man pods. Uh, incorporate the tight end as well. This is us working against the look that we're going to see, okay, that Saturday afternoon. So we'll start, for example, here. We don't have the tight ends with us, so the right tackle's on his own. <coughs> Excuse me. Right tackle's on his own. you got center and right guard together, left guard, left tackle, or left guard together. So now here, he's working his mid-zone step. We're looking to back shoulder with movement, throw that hip and hand in there. You can see as he throws that backside hand in, you want to, as I'm torquing with that backside hand, you want to throw that backside leg up in there as well, all right, to create movement. Movement for us doesn't always just come vertically. It can come horizontally, all right? There's more than one way to skin a cat. And if he's going to respect our mid-zone step here, and still continue to play the C-gap, then we're going to torque that out and create that width. You can see the same thing done here. I like the violence with the hips and hands. Okay? Now, you can see the same thing applying right there. Same kid, game day scenario. All right, you see him open up, and we are going to displace laterally here on our mid-zone. It doesn't have to be vertical. Now, interesting point here when you're talking zone football, um, especially for our open gap guys. If your track is correct to the linebacker, then block the near point, okay? And say that again. If your track is correct to the linebacker, then block the near point. So I just want them to understand what my departure is. Now, as I go to climb, if that linebacker comes downhill and fills right away, then I'm going to take him, right, nose to nose. If that linebacker stays and in, in, is sitting there cleaning his cleats, and I'm going to end up on his play side shoulder, then I'm going to pin it. If that linebacker works to the edge of the gap and fills and I end up on his backside shoulder, that's fine with me too. Again, if my track is correct. So if I look at mid zone here, I like the track of the right guard. I like the track of the left guard. In this case, the linebacker here on the, in the play side B gap wants to fill outside shoulder. That right guard is perfectly fine to do that. And now in the left guard scenario here, as he climbs, Right? We're not getting a violent downhill into the play side edge of the A-gap. He's sitting there, so now we get the pin. All right? That's okay. Again, block the near point. That is one of our main simple coaching points at the second and third level. 
Now we're just working play side movement. You know, for example, this week when this film was shot, we were getting a lot of what we call a hats player defensively, where he's stemming post snap, boom, into the A gap or working out to B. And so we're just trying to be cognizant of that movement and working these things in season is so imperative. You know, when you go back and it, it, the, what we were showing earlier, the fit and drive and the uh, the fit and movement and the, the hand replace, uh, the leverage drill that we were showing, a lot of that stuff is spring ball. It's fall camp. When we start game planning, we're going to do a ton of this type of stuff here so that we are feeling the fit. I think that's so important. Do not go through a game week where you are just repping all right, mindless drills over and over. You've got to feel the fit of the defense that you're going to face. Okay. So we were working that two man combo. All right. Now you see a two man combo here. Again, we worked this the entire week leading into that game, working that combination. You need to feel that fit. You can't just be sitting there doing zone steps on air and things of that nature. Now you look at a backside scoop, right? You got to teach a backside scoop block differently. But again, this is then, then you do a play side, but this is all just pod work. Okay, you see a great depth open step here by the left tackle. All right, you see that the uh, left guard is avoiding. Look at his backside leg. He's avoiding too much for my liking here. All right, but I think a pretty good job done by the left tackle. Uh, now, when we teach outside zone, all right, or mid zone, you saw it a couple clips back, we take what we call, if we are open gapped, and assume scoop step by the left tackle, all right? Meaning that he's going to assume that he's going to assume he's getting gap exchange. It's going to put him in a scenario where he has depth and leverage to get his job done. Because if, he, again, if he just takes a normal zone step, there's no way he can handle this move. He can't. So we want to take what we call assume scoop steps uh, at backside tackle. We also want to give our guys the autonomy up front, all right, to do different things based on one concept call. For example, this is just mid zone to the right, all right? They could find themselves in a situation where they double this, okay? Or they could find themselves in a situation if they like, all right, if they like the leverage that the right guard has here, but they're worried about the center getting over there, then we can make a fold call here, all right? And just work on that because again, the read for the back is simple. It's the first down lineman head up the play side of the center. Well, if we have helmet leverage right here, then it's defined. And you can see we've quickly defined that helmet leverage there by our left guard. We make a fold call, all right, and we're up and climbing to the linebacker right now. It's just a good way to change it up, all right? I mean, you look at this. You're going to base here, all right? You could work uh, a combo and scoop that right there, or you could work this. And I like to give our guys the flexibility in-game, all right, to change that up. Now, when you get into that situation, you have to understand that when you start potting things up in zone football, all right, that the bottom line is that we need to go one, two for one, two. So he's on a base right here. The left tackle is the center and the left guard are responsible for this defensive lineman and that linebacker period. So it doesn't matter to me again, whether they work a vertical combo here, vertical double, whether they work a progressive scoop or whether they decide that they want to fold this. Well, in this case, with a loose two eye there, the center's worried about getting play side on that two eye. So he makes a fold call. What you have to understand at that point is it's no longer zone. Even though there's a zone concept called, this is no longer zone. I have you, left guard. I have the D tackle. Center, I have the linebacker. You have to understand that, that in, inside of zone, we've made a man concept call. So when this defensive tackle gap exchanges, it's imperative that the left guard then hips it out and runs it. And you can see the fold concept that's starting here at center. You see him, he's working to go around, to fold around it. Now I'm going to put a foot in the ground and climb vertical right now because I have to go one for one right there. It's no longer zone. And one of my favorite clips here is you see an alert and an awareness here by the right tackle based on alignment of this linebacker. Okay, so he knows right now that there's a field zone pressure going on and you see him jump it. Now, you want to know how touchdowns end up getting scored. 
put three guys in the C gap. That's going to help you. Okay. So again, awareness and things of that nature. But again, you go back to, am I working pods? Am I working these things during the, the week or are we just drilling? Okay. And that's where we spend a lot of that time doing pod work. We're going to skip past that because it's just more fold stuff. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, this is zone right to the right, but with a heavy one technique and a 10 stack linebacker. And I'm just throwing some ideas out there for you guys with a heavy one technique backside and a 10 stack linebacker. There are times that we will back shoulder block. All right. That nose and climb and create what we talk about as a high wall right there. All right. To define it and put the ball downhill. Okay. So as you look at this and, and there, it, here it is on game tape. Okay. As you look at the center and, and the right guard here, they're working a combo. All right. Up here uh, to the play side linebacker, but because, all right, because the nose is such a heavy tilt, all right, instead of zo just smooth zoning that thing left, what they did is they're back shouldering it, making a back shoulder combo call. And when you get a back shoulder combo call, the center's job is to jam his play side foot in the ground and start to hip it back over the backside. And you can see the effectiveness of it there. Okay, and here's just a good look at a two-step fit, hands in, boom, good. We're in good shape there. Now, when it goes back to giving your guys all right, autonomy and allowing them to do different things, take a look at this clip right here. All right, you want to give them combo calls based on the leverage that you're seeing. Okay, for example, this is a gap scheme right here. Okay, we're gapping down to the right, but with a two eye right here and the alignment of that linebacker. All right, we're going to make a call that just says, you got him, I have room to climb. Let's not give up helmet leverage to try to re then regain it with a guy that's backside. I'm going to talk more about that in our outside zone pods. Let's not give up helmet leverage just to try to regain it. So here, all right, <clears throat> we're going to gap down on the two eye. We're going to climb with the center, okay, because we have the helmet leverage, all right? Now, Watch these back-to-back -back clips. You see the center pointing out the backside linebacker right here, okay? This is a gap scheme. We are gapping down to the left. Let's take a look at what call he makes here. He makes a combo call with the right guard. So he and the right guard are responsible for the nose and this backside linebacker, okay? Play result, solid, 15 yards. All right, they get their job done. At the end of the day, it's one, two for one, two. Center, right guard, front to nose to backside linebacker. Based on alignment of the backer and alignment of the defensive lineman, he made a combo call with the play side guard. Now, next time we run this concept, okay, he's concerned, all right, or excuse me, he likes the alignment of the backside linebacker. So now, this is still the center and the right guard working together. They're just going to execute it in a different manner because of the alignment and the stack of the down lineman and the linebacker. So he's just going to make a call that says, hey, we're going to man it. It's the same concept, blocked a different way. And I think that's important to understand is that you need to give them all right, more than just one answer to something. All right? And a lot of that for us goes on alignment. A lot of that for us goes on how people are playing us. And that goes into working your pods and working things of that nature. Here you see us working a sift, right? And this is when the numbers in the core are to our advantage. So we're going to block two. Nice job done right there by the tackle. Good violent feet, good departure, good hands. All right, and then we're up and climbing. Okay, and now you're going to see that very same thing occur here. All right, and you're going to see the sift. One, two, nice job. Nice job. Back should be through there, should be exploding. All right, through there, ends up being a six, seven yard gain. Should have been more, but you see the sift. Now, you're gonna see the same thing here. We're gonna have both of our tackles sifting here. Now, how I sift and how fast I sift, again, if we're not repping this in practice, we got problems. But you see the sift here by the left tackle. Look at the alignment of the linebacker that the left tackle, the boundary tackle's gotta sift to, okay? And then ask yourself, who is core responsible? Now, when you have a five-man core versus 10 personnel, somebody else is core responsible. And it's very evident right here, based on alignment, who your core responsible player is. So if you watch the right tackle, you're going to see him sit on his sift 
much longer. Okay. I think having these conversations and trying to put football in the brain of these guys is so important. Okay. Again, watch the two different sifts, left tackle versus right tackle here. Left tackle's got to climb and he's got to do it now. Right tackle has his eyes on that man the entire time, does a really nice job. He knows. And again, had he blindly climbed right now, don't know as this ball cuts back, he makes a tackle. So just working those sifts and doing your job right there, I think is imperative and, and, and working on those, working on those things in practice. Okay. Now, our OZ combos are three-man combinations. All right. And uh and and that's the, the front side, you know, versus a four down generically. It's a three-man combination. We have a combo call for that that's different than any of our two-man pod combos. Um it utilizes the, this combo drill, utilizes stance, departure, contact movement. And then we work at open versus closed window philosophy. Now, uh, you know, the way I was taught a long time ago was when I was first taught outside zone, true OZ, not pin and pull, is if, if you see color, you got to push it through. Um, we have taken a different approach to that. If I am the open gap man, okay, if I'm the open gap man in this situation, so right now if we're running OZ to the right, the guy who's open gapped is the right guard, okay? If I'm open gapped and I'm running, the question is not whether or not I see color, it's whether or not that color impedes my ability to climb to my assignment, okay? Because again, and I mentioned it on the earlier drill, we do not want to give up helmet leverage to gain helmet leverage. If this right tackle is winning right now on the five technique, all right, why on earth would we want to push this guy through all right, and give up leverage that we already have? In this case, the five technique is running out, all right? So the right guard is certainly well within his rights to climb right now that is open window you're going to see some really other some uh, other clips here that are very good in this look okay our decision is to be made on our third step okay if you watch this eyes see the helmet i know where he is if my track is correct how i block him is irrelevant right so if my decision is supposed to be made on the third step my eyes need to get to that next down defender Let's watch his foot. One, two, three, right there. No question right now, this is open window. It's time to climb, okay? You're going to see a, some better looks at it right here. Too far. Watch the left guard, right? See how flat he's got to go to get this? Okay, yeah, there's color right there showing because the left tackle's winning. But the question is, can I climb? Is that color impeding my ability to get to my assigned linebacker? And the answer to that is no, it's not. I should be climbing right over the heels of that defender up to my assignment. That is an incorrect rep, all right? This would be a correct rep because when I get to, ready to put my third step in the ground, that color is impeding my ability to get to linebacker level. So I need to overtake. Same thing. I think he's going too far here. Now, this left guard's got a very good understanding of this. Look at the eyes. Let's watch his helmet here, okay? And I think this is important. As much of this stuff as you can get filmed, you should, because as you watch his eyes, he opens, he's looking at the down, decisions made, see his helmet go vertical, and then he's doing a nice job of climbing over the heels. He can grab even a touch more green grass over those heels of that defender. But again, I really like the look right there by that left guard. One, two, three, climb, vertical. Eyes go vertical, we're in good shape. Same thing, nicely done right there on the OZ. Nicely done, okay? So now, you watch this from game footage. This is your fullback, he's off the ball, he has the alley. But look at how displaced the play side inside linebacker is. Pretty good idea, right guard, that on the third step, if that's my guy, because I'm open gapped, that this color is impeding my ability to get to that linebacker, so I need to push it through. Great job done right there by the right guard. Okay. You're going to see another look right here where the left guard is working OZ. All right. Let's see his steps. One, two, three. 
color is impeding because of gap exchange. So I overtake and win. I'm in good shape. Tackle climbs. Okay. And we're off to the races. So we'll go to the next clip. Now, backside, if you guys are chop block guys, which, you know, right now for, you know, public service announcement, we only teach it uh, on the line of scrimmage now. We do not chop uh, second level guys because it's too gray as to what's allowed and what's not. We've stopped doing it. But here, if you're on the line of scrimmage, if you have a one technique, we allow the backside guard to chop. If it's a two eye, we do not. Two eyes a gap exchange alignment that could jam this guy up if you're trying to throw a chop. The other thing is, even if you do get it cut, you're not going to allow the angle uh, of departure for the backside tackle to get to that linebacker. So again, as I look at this here, you can see us the need right here at right guard to push through the five because that color is impeding my ability to get to that linebacker. Okay, so that should give you a pretty good look at the OZ. Here's a nice job done right here. Again, by the left guard, and you saw it, but you saw it show up on the practice film. That that kid has a good understanding of this. One, two, three, climb, block the near point. Okay. And yes, a lot of our outside zone, unless you get gap exchange, ends up going through the B gap. But it just puts that strain and that stress on the defense laterally. Okay. Now, incorporating the running backs into a drill is something, and this this drill is called the dip and slip, something that we want to try to get done here. And this is just emphasizing us as offensive linemen blocking the near point, okay, at linebacker level. So this is going on a cadence. You see the back has the ball in his hands. He's about four yards away from the first defender, okay, uh, or from the first offensive lineman. Now, as that offensive lineman climbs, his job is to block the near point, all right, of the, of the defender. And the back's job is to cut off of the hip and then look up the next block. And so all we're trying to do here is work on second and third level blocking and running in space for the tailback. The thing I don't like about the tailback here is he does a nice job of making the cut off the first block. Now, when he looks up the second one, he wants to stay tighter to that. He wants to skin that a little bit tighter. But now we're getting three live reps in here, offensive line wise, working, blocking the near point, opening the hip, all right, opening our hip and driving. So I think this is a really, really good drill uh, to incorporate your backs and your offensive linemen together. You see the back here, boom. Now I look up my next block, one, and now chase it. You can see a little better job right there by by uh, by Mike Campbell there, our tailback on chasing that thing. Good, good. So you get the idea of here how we incorporate the backs and everybody else there. So, all right, guys. Hey, listen, I appreciate it. Um, Man, that went fast, and uh, hopefully you got something out of it. If you guys have any questions, uh, if you want, want this tape, um, I have it on a, on a YouTube channel. I can just I can shoot it to you easy. My email is located here, uh, and then you can see where you can follow me and, and our, our football program on Twitter uh, if you're interested. So, again, I thank you, and I appreciate your time. Take care, guys.